begin this debate. Uh, Mr. Jotwinder, you can start from your introduction. So you have two minutes. Yeah, hello, everyone. My name is Jotwinder Sodi, and I've been involved with the school council from last 10 years. And this is his eighth year in a row as a school council chair. And I've been lobbying with the Homeowner Welfare Association to the consumer right protection at all levels of the government, including provincial, municipal, and we are raising the genuine and very legitimate concerns of residents of Brampton and surroundings with the appropriate authorities to have them resolved. Today, I'm here running for an election for Ward 7 and 8 regional councillor, and we are looking forward to have resident support based on the facts and whatever they have seen in the past in, in the in the last 20 years, the development in the Brampton is only houses and houses, only developers are developing, no industry, no businesses came in. We had Chrysler, we had few other companies, Ford, Nortel, there is nothing else came in. We need a university, we need some things, and I can bring up the platform where we could have those things in the city, because if we are together, if we raise a voice jointly, we could achieve something for province and federal. So this, this is a, my platform, and for how are we going to achieve it? i give you a simple example. If we initiate summer, because the land is very small right now in Brampton, all the houses are occupied by the developers, and now we want to have a vertical buildings, which is a, we want a research and development centers, we want some hospitality industry, and some of the reason, uh, reasons where we could have more jobs creation in Brampton, which will lead towards having having the, the, the employment for the youth as well as residents of Bramptons, not a low paid jobs, where we can feed their fa our families and live happily. And that employment will lead towards have a less congestion on the roads, and that will lead towards have, have less accidents, more family so, time as well as. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah, so thank you. Logan, it's your turn. Hi, I'm Logan Anderson. Uh, I was born in Newfoundland. I moved to Ontario in 89. I'm a father and a husband. I'm running for regional council because I think that we need to bring democracy back into play with the people. Um, the way things have been going lately, at all levels, it seems that people are making decisions that aren't good for the people. It seems even when the people come forward with their issues that they are ignored. Um, I think we need better transit in Brampton and more so using money for Brampton transit rather than expensing large amounts of money on Zoom. Uh, I believe in 2013, 2.5 million was spent on Brampton Transit where 45.3 went to Zoom. And we have these ginormous bus shelters now that aren't actually shelters when you have four foot doors on the sides. Um, so I just think that uh, running for regional council, our job is to be servants of the people. And I think that politicians all across the board have just lost this. And I'd like to have the chance to reinstate it and uh, mandate policies for strict rules on budget spending, uh, have total transparency for everything, have it so that every councillor would have to put up what they've spent out of their budget every week on the internet. Because let's face it, we live in the age of information. And I mean, we should use it. I don't see why we haven't been. Um, these surprises like $766 million not being spent, that was earmarked. That's now probably going to cost us over a billion. Right? I just think that we really need to get on the ball and not drop it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Gail. Thank you. My name is Gail Miles, and I am the existing regional councillor today for Ward 7 and 8. I have represented this community for the last 25 years, and the reason why I continue to serve as a member of regional council is because I have had the support and the confidence of the residents that I represent. In the last nine elections that I have run for, I have only ever lost one poll and I have always had over 80% of the vote. And the reason that is, is because I am accessible to my community. I listen to their concerns when they contact me I get involved in their neighborhoods, and I take action when action is needed. 
at regional council, I have, and city council, I have taken a leadership role over the time that I've been there, serving as chairman of management, finance, economic development, and human services. I have continued to have the support and the confidence of my colleagues, both at the city and at the region of Peel. The things that I have done for the community that I am most proud of, the first is Wellspring Chingakuzi Cancer Support Center, which I formed a foundation, and within three years, with the support of the community, Wellspring was built and serves thousands of residents every year free of charge so no one has to face cancer alone. I was also the champion for Brampton Flower City and as you all know, Brampton is recognized today as the Flower City of Canada. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Yes, Cheryl. Hello, my name is Cheryl Rodericks and I'm running for Regional Councillor for Ward 7 and 8 in the City of Brampton. I'm running because Brampton needs change. It desperately needs change. It's time to stop the abusive, wasteful spending of our hard-earned tax dollars. I'm not a career politician at all. I live in the real world. I will bring my work and my experience to the job because I understand the everyday needs of the real people. I understand the challenges and the struggles that they are facing on a daily basis. Our current incumbent has stated she has 25 plus years of experience. Well, I say to everybody, look where that has gotten us. And now they're asking for more time in the office. Brampton deserves much better. The city of Brampton needs individuals who will be able to bring actual solutions that will change our city for the better. I will bring vision, commitment, trust, and energy. We need new phrases, new vision, and new ideas. I say to people in Brampton, we need better transparency, fiscal accountability. That is why we are where we are today. The residents of Brampton now have the power to change the political landscape. You have the power. Because if you keep continuing the way we're going and you vote in the same current incumbent and the same council, we will only get the same old, same old. The power is with you to change. Thank you. Thank you. So our first question will be for Jot Winder. Uh, what does social responsibility mean to you as an elector regional councillor? You are accountable, you are responsible for your job, and you are fair to the assigned task which have been given by electorate residents to give you, represent them, to protect their rights, to work for them, not for the corporations. You work for the residents who voted for you. You have to bring the industry, the business, which is need of today to have the employment for our kids. Otherwise, at the later state, our kids will ask this question, what you were doing before to have when you were working hard and your rights were not protected, how we can survive our next generation in Brampton. People are gonna be move out if there is no business, there is no sustainability in this city. So for that reason, I say you have a more social responsibility on your shoulders when you are representing the residents of Brampton, not only Ward 7 and 8, whole Brampton needs a change, and this is the time we have in our hand to bring the change to the city, and let's together work and change the city's perception as well as moving forward, have the things the way we're supposed to be overspending, budgeting, and all those things we all know. We do not bring it. We do not wa want to have our family members hired in, in a particular department or particular city hall for their, what are the reasons they could explain better. My concern is that we have to work for the city. Thank you. Logan? Social responsibility. Yep. In Brampton, I'd say we need that. We need diligence, we need accountability, and we need transparency. Um, people need to be held accountable for what they do, for what they say, and they have to be uh, transparent with their functions. Uh, if elected, I would bring a motion in front of council, like I said earlier, that everybody would have to disclose their finances at the end of every week. 
at the minimum. Um, we have to look out for the people. Uh, this intensification that the province is putting on us saying that we have to have like 900,000 people by 2040, I believe, is gonna make us like a Toronto downtown core. Uh, our infrastructure currently is wouldn't support that. Uh, our roads don't get wide and fast enough for the amount of buildings we're putting up. Um, if you look at the 410 in the mornings and in the afternoons for rush hour, I mean, it's a bottleneck. It's, it's a parking lot. They've named our highways, right? Um, so we do really need to have more jobs in Brampton brought in. And there's nothing for children between the ages of 12 and 18 to do, really. And this is where I see they run astray and get into crime. So we should have more use of tax dollars to help the youth. We, we really need to help the youth because they are our future. And like our colleague over here said, they're gonna look back in the future and say, what were you doing? Were you paying attention? Were you actually standing up for what is right? And I'd like to stand up for what's right for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Gail? Could you repeat the question, please? What does social responsibility mean to you as an elected regional councillor? Well, for me, social responsibility means that as a government that we are sensitive to the needs of all people in our community, no matter their age, their economic background, um, their race, or their religion. Um, social responsibility is ensuring that we have adequate housing um, for people in our community. It's ensuring that children, when they go to school, have food, so that have breakfast programs, so that they can um, so that they can learn. A hungry child is is a child um, that will not be able to achieve their full potential. Social responsibility for me is ensuring that the senior citizens in our community are looked after, that they have social outlets, they have adequate housing, they have home care. Social responsibility is ensuring the youth in our community are able to be active, to socialize, that they live in safe environments, that they have positive role models and mentors. So really, social responsibility is, is really about ensuring that we have an excellent quality of life in our community where people can feel safe in their neighborhoods, where they can feel safe in their homes. Thank you. Sure. Social responsibility means doing what's right, not being told after the fact that you now have to do the right thing. It means being transparent and accountable to the residents of Brampton. Common sense. I was caught with my hand in the cookie jar at my job, I'd be out the door, just as you would be. I wouldn't be sitting there still getting paid under investigation. Social me responsibility means looking after the needs of the people. This is why we've also fallen behind. Brampton is lagging behind in so many cities. We're lagging behind Mississauga and the rest of Toronto as well. We have no university, no university in Brampton for our young. Oh yes, it's been thought of, but it's a little too late now. Now we have to go back to the drawing board. We need to create more jobs in our city. In turn, job creations will hopefully attack poverty. Hopefully it'll attack hunger. Because right now, parents are working one, two, and three jobs to keep their family and their household running. And to me, that's not acceptable, not when you have children. We need to provide more opportunities for our youth. If we have more opportunities, we will also create more jobs. It's all systematic, and they all work together. We'll keep our youth in the city. They won't want to leave Brampton, because right now our youth as soon as they are finished school, they're out of Brampton because there's nothing in Brampton for our youth. Better service for our senior care. Better transportation and facilities for our senior. To me, that's what social responsibility means, doing the right thing. Thank you. Uh, I think I have to repeat. So when one bell rings, then you have 30 seconds mm -hmm. to wrap up. So don't think like if one bell rings, then you have to wrap it up. You have still 30 seconds. Okay, so second question will be for Logan. Uh, how would you manage taxpayers' money more efficiently? 
to manage taxpayers' money more efficiently, we need, we need transparency. We need transparency for all of our contracts. We need transparency for the money we give to NGOs. We need transparency for just the basic budgets. Uh, there's no reason why in today's world that we can't see everything, right? There's no reason why we have to hide behind closed doors to work out contracts for the people when it's the people's money that is going to finance it. Repeat the question. What, how would you manage taxpayers' money more efficiently? Um, I'd like to go back to the old mayor's uh, motto too. It was uh, Brampton taxpayer, uh, Brampton employees saving taxes. It was the best program, right? And you got to lead from the top down. You got to start. You got to be the inspiration for all the employees of the cer of the city, because um, they look up to the leaders and see what they do. And if they see that they're getting away with it, well, then you know we're going to get away with it too, right? So you got to lead by example. You got to be transparent. You got to you got to be open and out front for everything. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. I just wanted to thank Logan for bringing up the, the BEST program because I was the chair of the BEST program when we ran it in the city of Brampton. And it was during a time where the city was going through a recession and the municipality was looking for every cent that they could find in order to keep the taxes in the city of Brampton low. How, does, how do we make the, how do we make greater efficiency in the city of Brampton. Well, I can tell you as um, the representative for Ward 7 and 8 for many years, it's a balancing act. All year round, we get calls from residents in our community looking for service. You very seldom will get someone picking up the phone and saying, I don't want as much snow removal, I don't want my road paved, I don't want the trees in my park cut down. Residents expect a high quality of service. So for government, it's always a balancing act. What kinds of services can we provide and how much money can we um, expect the taxpayer to absorb? Over the last four years in this term of council, our taxes have stayed below the rate of inflation. And that is the fiscally responsible thing for us as a municipality to do. Because as we grow, our costs grow. And the residents in this community expect their municipal government to provide a good quality of life for them and their families. Thank you. Sure. Uh, first of all, of course, we need better transparency and accountability. Um, to some degree, Brampton needs to be run a little bit more like a business. Um, there used to be the value-based expense, now they've gone back to the rule. Well, why we ever left value, I can't understand, because the rule is pretty simple, working on the rule expense basis for your expenses. Um, if the shoe doesn't fit, don't buy it, quite honestly. If it's an expense that you're not requiring for the city, for the residents, it should not be incurred. We have credit cards. We have credit cards for the city, and then we have personal credit cards. Personal purchases are being made on our city credit cards. Where, where in any business world is that allowed, where you can make purchases on, personal purchases on your business credit card? Our property taxes, although they may have been a little low, they're still very high. They're the high. They're far higher than Mississauga. That's for sure. What they're are we lower. getting in return? They're lower. I, I beg to differ because I'm I have sorry. family in Mississauga and they're I've compared lower. the tax roll. So please, yeah. They're lower. Well, they are is, not. They're not. They're lower. They but not. can I ask the moderator? I, I am talking wise. Yeah. So Thank please, you. I Gail. apologize. I apologize. Thank but they're you. lower. Yes, Cheryl, continue, please. Our property taxes are higher than Mississauga, and Mississauga gets so much more than Brampton. Why is that? We do not have half the facilities that Mississauga has. Thank you. Uh, Jotwinder? Yes, I agree with my other colleagues other than incumbent. We need accountability. We need a transparency. 
We, when we go out for grocery, we are doing two, three jobs. When we go out for a grocery, we look for flyers, we look for better deals for our families. Why not city look at that way? What is the reason we cannot do it? We have to bring some kind of, instead of giving one business house contracts over contracts for decades and decades, let's bring it to the bigger companies. Let them compete among themselves in transparent way that every resident has a right. Because my understanding is that the politicians and who are representing us, they are the servants and they are at service of residents because they are run by taxpayers' money. We do not have any right to misuse the funds. We have it. Brampton has a lot of housing and the region is taking a lot of money, 100% increase in the levies. Recently, we all know what happened, that money is being used by other cities. Brampton is not even taking their own fair share from the funding which we are collecting is being paid by all Bramptonians. All the new subdivisions, all the taxes are going to the, the region and that region is misusing the funds. How? We all know I do not have to go for that reason. And another thing is I would have to bring in affordable housing which is not there today. Taxes are high. I'm staying very strongly. I've been living in Miss Saga. Taxes are way higher and services are way poor compared to other cities, and credit cards are misused. So these things, we want to have a transparency, accountability to the residents, to the Bramptonians. Let's do a proper change. Look at the credentials of the candidates before you vote. Please do double check the credentials, what they have done, what they have accomplished for the residents, what their vision is for the future. Let's do a proper change. This is the only time we have, in other words, generations will not forgive us for our mistakes which we, if we do it today. Thank you. Thank you. So our third question to Gail. So would you lobby with the city to put a moratorium on new houses for one year in order to complete pending projects? Could you repeat that? Would you lobby with the city to put on moratorium stoppage on new houses for one year in order to complete pending projects? Okay. Well, that's a catch of 22. Um, first off, when I was first elected to council, I actually did put a motion on the floor to, to freeze residential growth. And I quickly learned that as a municipality, we're not allowed to do that. Because the um, city of Brampton is actually mandated by the province of Ontario, as a growth municipality. So um, we have, as a municipality, put in within our official plan um, policies to ensure that um, infrastructure is in place before growth occurs. But of course, in order to have infrastructure uh, put into place, you need the development charges because development charges pay for the growth. So at the present time, the catch up with the capital projects in the city of Brampton is not because of the amount of growth. It's more about not having the capital dollars in order to um, complete all of the projects that we have in the city of Brampton. A lot of it is timing. We're continuing to grow. And at one point, we had over 1,000 capital projects that we needed to complete. So a lot of it is timing. A lot of it is getting approvals from other levels of government, um, approvals from the Ministry of Natural Resources, the Minister of the Environment. Every time we go to build a road, build a bridge, uh, put a house up, we have to get approvals from all of the other commenting agencies, including the province of Ontario. Okay, thank you. Sure. It's, it's not so much putting a moratorium on new housing it's starting to look at our land. Brampton has a lot of land. We need to now look at it more strategically. Where we place housing and where we place businesses. Because right now it seems that council, as soon as they wake up, oh, let's, let's do a residential housing over here. Next day, let's do something else. It, there's no vision and there's no clear long-term projection over here. We have homes mixed in with industrial areas. We need to set aside specific land use, for industrial and set aside specific land use for our residential. This way we're keeping our residents in Brampton 
We're creating more jobs, as I said before. It now becomes working together. They're all intrinsic, and they work upon each other. That's what we need to do. We need to look at a more strategic, long-term vision, which is clearly what has lacked all these years. Thank you. Can you repeat the question, please? What uh, would you lobby with the city to put moratorium on new houses for one year uh, in order to complete pending projects? I would give you another example. City of Brampton, the designs were made wrong. Grills in the houses, and I approached myself. My own house was made wrong design. And I approached builder, no, I'm going to fix it. Tarion, no. I'm going to give you a specific example. Then I got a letter from City Hall that this design varies from the, from the housing, but it's OK. It's acceptable. June 9th, I did a presentation with My Gail Miles, our representative. She was there. City ordered July 9th. We did a presentation that change the design, change the grills. I'm going to give you a response from the builder, which clearly states, you would have approved anyway. We have given a totally free away to those developers. Let's bring the industry. Let's bring the, these are the faces which are public servants. They're hiding their faces when people are taking picture. We don't want those kind of politicians. We don't want those kind of public servants who are running from taxpayer money, hiding their faces. And I have did, did a presentation in a, in a region of Peel regarding levies and taxes. There is enough now. Let's look for a strategic plan to bring it industry. Ward 7 and 8, close to uh, Queen Street and Gore Road. Uh, the land is sitting there for industry and business. And I, I got an answer for the, that particular uh, regional councillor in a public meeting that this land is sitting there from last 15, 20 years. This belongs to Regional Council Ward 7 and 8. Nobody bring in the industry. If you, that land belongs to those particular regional councillors or the, uh, their own personal land, they would have initiated industry. They would have approached the business houses. Let's give them incentives. Let's bring the industry. Let's give the jobs. Let's give the youth involved in, 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 the, in the jobs. Let's stay away from the drugs. Let's stay away from those problems which are not being done. I Thank encourage, you. please, look Thank at you. it. Let's work Thank together. You to bring the Thank industry you. Just back. Thank you. Logan, it's your turn. What I mandate, would I lobby the city to have a moratorium yeah. on new houses? First problem with that is we're going to lose lots of jobs. I mean, let's face it, houses are being built and it's creating lots of jobs. It's employing a lot of people. Um, personally, I wouldn't mandate for a moratorium. What I would do is I would levy heavier uh, taxes on the developers because they're the ones that are making the millions and millions of dollars off of these uh, buildings and the houses. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't be building houses. Let's face it, right? So, no, I wouldn't. Uh, and completing current projects. Brampton has a triple A plus rating. There's no reason why we can't borrow and complete our projects as we need, which would create a boom too, an economic boom. And the more money that is fed into employees working is the more money that's going to be spent in Brampton. And as for bringing industries to Brampton, like my colleague says, how do you attract industries? I mean, Chrysler is here, yes, but why are they here? Because they get zero taxes. How is that a help to the, uh, do they get? Mm. No, they have to pay taxes. Good, mm. good. Yeah. So the information I was fed was incorrect, yeah, but that's fine. <laughs> anyway, so I see it as it's a race to the bottom anyway, because, you know, Mississauga says we want the industry, so we'll give you a better rate than this guy and whatever. But no, I wouldn't mandate for a moratorium on house building. I would okay. levy more taxes to make sure the infrastructure is paid for. Thank you. Thank you. So our fourth question to Shiloh. What areas of Brampton do you think an opportunity for development and bringing jobs to city? What areas? Yeah, what areas do you think? Well, right now we have, um, primarily we have down uh, Castlemore, where if we're going west on Castlemore, we have a lot of land here. We also have land up north as well. Um, we, need, uh, we have those areas that we can look at either housing or developing it 
for uh, industrial use. But we have to be careful because we need to stay connected as well to the transport or the highway system as well, our infrastructure. So we've got to make sure that it's, it's well placed and strategic so that we're bringing in the business also and being ha have greater access for our households and the business. Okay, thank you. Jodhvinder? Yes, we have some land uh, close to the Bramley GO station, which is uh, uh, occupied by uh, one of the business houses. They are moving out, industry is moving out. That land can be utilized for the university in Brampton, which is very central, very, very proper location for the university. I will bring that motion to the city. And when you have a representing millions of people, you have a full authority over the province to convince them to bring the, the university as well as industry. And that the most of the land is already allocated to the business houses for the housing because we don't know what is the understanding between the city and the business houses to have housing. Why Mississauga have a lot of industry with the pockets of housing and industry. One, if you see Highway 50 along, all industry is coming in that area. Caledon is getting industry. Any reason that Brampton Pocket is not getting the business houses, we need to have a research and development, some kind of, as said, I said, vertical businesses where we have a very less land left, which is vacant, can be utilized for the industry and business houses. Let's do a strategic and physical, feasible plan to bring the businesses which give more jobs create more jobs, involve more youth and our families instead of going out of the city. When you go out of the city, you travel more, you're losing a family time, as well as w there is more traffic, and that more congestion will lead towards accidents, more in car insurance. Anything you go in Brampton is expensive, either insurance or taxes, and the services are poorest ever compared to any surrounding municipalities. Let's learn from there best efforts. There is nothing wrong in learning from the peers who are doing a better job than us. Let's do it together with a new and energetic council to do that industry bringing back the businesses which make sense for Thank Bramptonians. You. Thank you. Logan? To bring industry to Brampton, I think we should be leaders in Canada. I mean, let's face it, the fossil fuel industry is on its way out. Uh, you know, we do need the air and the water Without it, we can't survive. Uh, currently, it seems that profit comes before people and planet, but without the planet, we won't have any people, and therefore, we won't need the profit. So what I see that the city of Brampton could do is we could invest in newer technologies and newer industries on our own, uh, rather than trying to attract in current industries like, say, Sony or something to build solar plants, uh, solar panels. Why can't we just have like a Brampton solar panel plant, uh, employ our own, have them travel less, um, free up family time, like the colleague said. Um, we could even bring in for windmills here in Brampton. Why not? I mean, there's no reason why we can't. I mean, we do need change. We need to think outside of the box. I mean, we can't be confined to relying on others to solve our problems. We should be trying to solve our own. And with our AAA rating, there's no problems in borrowing so that we can start these industries up and sell to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yale? I kind of lost track of the question. What areas <laughs> of Brampton do you think an opportunity for development and bringing jobs to city? Okay, what areas of Brampton? And yeah. I'm, I'm assuming you're not just talking physically, you're talking about how we go about um, growing the economic base in, in our municipality. Um, I, I just want to make it clear that the City of Brampton does have an official plan and a secondary plan, and that is reviewed every five years. And within those plans, it actually shows where growth will it occur. It has your, the houses on the map, it has the schools on the map, and it also shows where industrial and business growth will occur. The City of Brampton today has 4,000 acres. We have more land in Brampton than any other municipality in the GTA that is zoned and ready for businesses to um, come to Brampton. In the last four years of council, 
we have spent, we have developed a new marketing campaign, and we have actually been going out to attract international foreign investment to this municipality. We have also put strategies in place to ensure that our existing businesses are supported and developing the networks within those communities. I happen to think Brampton is a great place, and despite what my colleagues believe, um, the city of Brampton is ranking as one of the highest um, municipalities in the GTA for economic development and for new jobs. In fact, in 2013, our job growth rate in the city of Brampton um, was 50% uh, greater than the year before. We are attracting international headquarters for Air Canada, for Canon, for, for uh, Unilever, for many, many large companies. But Brampton is also the base for small and medium companies in our community. So economic development in the city of Brampton is well, and uh, there is all kinds of opportunities for business to locate and grow their business in this city. Thank you. Uh, so Jotwinder, yes, last question for you. What would you do for, for more affordable housing? I would, the business houses which are being given a free way, now I'm gonna be asking them with the, with the previous regime, mm -hmm. in a new era, we will ask them to cut down their profits and this is a budget that we're gonna be giving you a subsidized land. Let's build the houses. The price is capped on a certain level because Bramptonians are tired, sick and tired of paying high taxes, either property taxes or utilities. Everything is being embedded in our contracts. 15 years, 10 years contracts are coming on the way. Let's, I'm gonna stop all those contracts from the developers. Let's do not, if you're making a house, just sell the house. Do not sell 500 project, other products to the Bramptonians at a $600, $7,000 penalties over it and a lot of increases. For I will give them subsidized land and I will make sure that the housing price will not increase to a percent for that particular residents and seniors and low income group with the Brampton has in jobs for low paid jobs. How you can pay the taxes, I think our incumbent can tell us with the, with the low paid minimum wages jobs, how you can afford a house, how you can afford the taxes, how you can live with your family. That's why I'm, I'm ha I agree with my colleague that she said we have to do two, three jobs. We are on the road. We are not taking care of our families. Why? Because all this mismanagement by this regime. Let move this regime out of the system. Let's bring in new blood, let new generation to have a better vision better industry, better growth for Bramptonians. Let's work together as a team. Otherwise, our generation, as I said before, will not forgive us for our misdeeds, which we are doing today. If you don't come out and vote for a change, will never be change, ever come back. 20, 30 years, these people are gonna be leading us Thank with the false promises. Thank you. Logan? I believe the latest stat for people living in poverty in Peel is 167,000 people. Um, that number is much too high for uh, a city as good as Brampton, to be honest, with Mississauga and Caledon included in that number. Um, affordable housing seems to be a very hot topic issue. Um, I heard that the waiting list can be up to 10 years or longer to get a house. Um, you have these corporations that come in and build their houses, take the money and leave. We should institute a committee to find out what works in other cities to have a certain percentage of the housing they build for affordable housing. Uh, whether it be 10% of the houses, 15% or whatever, but we need a fixed number of the percentage of the development to be for affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Gail? Well, I think Logan's um, actually uh, uh, hit the nail on the, on the head in this one. Affordable housing cannot be funded from the property tax base, and that's what your municipal taxes go for. 
we have got to get funding from other levels of government if we are going to be successful in building affordable housing. Um, the federal government and provincial government um, have been pulling out of providing funding for affordable housing, which means that the region of Peel, which was given affordable housing by the province of Ontario, has to look for in of ways in order to, to build houses. Um, we are still a municipality that's growth. We could be looking to the development industry to provide X amount of lots within a greenfield development to assure that affordable housing takes place. Habitat for Humanity is another amazing organization in our city. Um, over the last few years in Ward 7, um, I was able to encourage the city of Brampton and the region of Peel to provide two lots, one which they just started a women build last week uh, to build 18 house, townhouses and another in the H section. So these are some of the ways that we can be innovative and creative if we have small parcels of surplus land that can be rezoned and provided to organizations like Habitat for Humanity, um, we will be able to, to be successful. But at the end of the day, to expect the development industry to build houses for no, uh, for, for, for no revenue, it isn't gonna happen. So we, we have to be creative and think outside the box. Thank you, Shirley. We do need to, we do need to look at work with the builders we need to provide some sort of incentive for the builders to be able to work with the city and provide more affordable housing for the residents who need it. We also need to work with some of the local groups, for instance, the Peel Poverty Action Group. Uh, if you attend their meetings, I've attended their meetings, and if you attend their meetings and listen to them, they're a voice right there. They'll tell you what you need. And if you work with them and listen and understand, you'll have a better idea. Again, we also need to look at areas or look, out, look outside um, the country and look at other role models and what they have done to improve their affordable housing as well for their residents. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So let's uh, wrap up. So closing remarks, we'll start from Logan. Um, some people are career politicians. I'm not into it for that. Some people are into it for the money and the status. That's not why I'm here. I'm just here to do what's right for the people and to listen and to make sure things happen when they need to be done. Uh, again, I go back to the $766 million that was earmarked for infrastructure projects that wasn't spent over the past seven years. That's now gonna cost us basically 1.2 billion or more because of inflation. The cost of products have gone up, the cost of labor's gone up, everything else. Um, I'm even willing to do so much as only taking 80% of the pay for region and donating the other 20% back to the Ward 7 and 8, uh, whether it be playground parks or improvements on a rec center or whatever. I'd leave that up to the people to decide. Um, I'd put motions forward for the transparency of all financial transactions, whether it's contracts, developments, contributions, donations, NGOs. Uh, personal contributions. I think everyone should have to declare their net worth when they get elected with a checkup at the end of the year to make sure no one's taking backdoor money. Thank you. Thank you. Gail? Well, I happen to think that Brampton's a pretty amazing city. I've lived here for 40 years. I've raised my, my daughters. I have a wonderful granddaughter. And um, I just, the reason why I continue to serve this community is because I have a passion for this city and I have an, an honest caring for my community. I think those that have continued to support my reelection do so because of my track record. Um, I'm the type of politician that listens to my constituents. I get the greatest pleasure out of being able to assist people um, when, when they need help. And I'm never going to apologize for serving this community for 25 years. I don't know what a career politician is, but certainly the reason why I continue to serve this community is because the people of this community continue to support me as their leader. Thank you, Charlie. 
I keep saying it's time. It's time for change. Uh, we've got to stop the abuse of wasteful spending of our hard-earned tax dollars. We have to stop the nepotism that goes on at City Hall. The abuse of power has gone on far too long. I love Brampton. I think it's a beautiful, vibrant city. But at the rate we're going, it's not going anywhere. I'm not a career politician. I've not lost touch. I've been out there. I've worked. I've not only had a job as a city councillor. So I understand. I bring that experience and that challenge of understanding what it's like to be out there in the real world like everybody else. So I keep stressing to my residents and my, my neighbours, change. We have the power to make change happen. If we continue to vote the same council members in and they keep getting re-elected, then we will have nobody else to blame but ourselves because the vicious cycle of abuse will continue. Thank you. Jyotirinder. Yes. I agree with my colleagues other than incumbent. The reason is because the service have been done by these, these politicians is for self-service. I do see whole family is working for city, not the city of Mississauga, because they are so talented and experienced, knowledgeable, that we do not find the jobs of our kids and other generations. So I'm not a career politician. I'm, I'm working towards the community. I'm a working class. I belong to. We, we are hardworking. I understand the concerns of a grassroots consumers and residents. Whatever genuine problems we all know, let's work together to solve them. This is a time to solve the problems. Discussion is done enough. We all know what is right, what's wrong. Look for the credential of the candidates before you vote. Look for what they have done, what they could have done, and what the other vision is coming to the city hall. Let's. Let's do not waste time on again and again, repeatedly doing the same mistakes. Let's do a change, real Thank change. Otherwise, we all should be blamed for Thank our mistakes not to vote and for voting the wrong candidates. Thank Let's you. vote the right candidate, whoever is you feel. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, Thank you. We know it's uh, election time and you, are, you all are so busy. So we wish you all best of luck for your campaign. So let's work together for a better Brampton. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.